Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things Lego. Hit the link below to find a store near you. Matthew Green, DFW Lug. Uh, this is the Octane plant. Um, being from North Texas, uh, we see a lot of these on the Gulf Coast in Texas and Louisiana, so I thought it'd be a good opportunity to build something folks see on a day-to-day -day basis. So would you say this is fairly realistic to how a lot of these types of facilities look, or is it mostly kind of imaginative for you? It's squashed together. Uh, we have at least 100 safety violations. If an OSHA guy came, he would just throw us completely out. Everything is way too close together. But uh, the piping is the thing I wanted to, to get more of than anything, and I think the piping does make some sense as far as the overhead, running every which way, going between buildings. Uh, and you've got a little bit of everything. You've got... Uh, uh, power generation, you've got natural gas storage and oil storage, you've got electrical uh, apparatus, you've got uh, chemical refining, so there's a little bit of everything in it. Yeah. And I love how you've themed it with Octan, which if people aren't familiar with that, tell people a little bit about kind of like uh, the history of that and how that's been incorporated with Lego over the years. Well, yeah, way back in the day, um, Octane, well first Shell and then Octane uh, became the Shell, became the Lego um, city gas producer. You got gas stations, you got convenience marts, you got trucks. And, uh, so it was just logical not to try to do one of the real gas producers down here, but pick Octane, which is the Lego brand. <laughs> There you go. And you mentioned these pipes here. So those those kind of chrome silver pieces really catch your eye. Where, where did those pieces come from? Uh, as a member of a lug, we got the opportunity to purchase a large number of them at one time for a relatively good price. So I thought this would be a great way to display them. Perfect. How do you connect all those up there and kind of make all these different shapes with those? Uh, Technic pins. Uh, and then, as you can notice, some of the connectors ha have to use non-chromed colors because they just don't make them in the chrome colors. Um, for the connectors and for some of the bins. Mm -hmm. And then as we move to the buildings, like this one right here on the right side, so what's happening inside that facility? That would be a fracking tower. That would be where you break out uh, the uh, bad portions of the oil. You make the oil clean to burn in gasoline or even cleaner to burn in jet airplanes, things like that. Mm -hmm. it's, a it's part of the refining process. Gotcha, and then how about this tower over here? It would be what they would really look like. It's standalone. Uh, the four together would not be very safe. So uh, the four together would just give it some visual pop and some appeal and then dropped one in just to show what they would actually look like. Very nice. And then that takes us over to uh, a very different looking tower here. Yeah, this would be the, this would be the chemical plant. This would be where they're making um, fertilizers or pesticides or making plastic for us to build Legos out of. <laughs> so, uh, you know, anything from toothbrushes to Legos to uh, food additives are, would be coming out of this building. And I love how you stuck with the colors on the big silo towers here that fit the logo as well. Yeah, I tried to c carry it through uh, there and also on the storage tanks in the back, um, the trucks, of course. You know, tried to get the red and green, red, green, and white as much as possible. And those storage tanks, of course, have that nice round shape there. So what pieces did you use to achieve that? Uh, one by one uh, round bricks and then one by three bricks to uh, offset. So the round bricks give you the ability to curve without them snapping apart. And then what are those pieces on top there to create that roof? That was from a long gone uh, uh, UFO series that Lego had, probably, I don't know, the mid-aughts maybe. Uh, they'd come out with them and they did space saucers. Mm -hmm. So uh, some of them have the uh, printing removed. Um, barkeeper's friend is our, is, is our friend. Uh, some of them you notice still have the printing on them. And then you get kind of the road portion over here. So what happens in this section? Yeah, this is where the, uh, the chemicals or gasoline would be loaded uh, for delivery to your local gas station or to a further refining plant. The trucking comes in and drops it off. Uh, on the far side, there's a rail loading, which would be for more bulk. And then I like these sort of like power, is that like electrical tower there? Like a substation. Uh, this is the, this, this kind of uh, industrial um, application uses and produces a lot of electricity. So uh, if it's a, a natural gas fired uh, power plant, it produces a lot of, get, of power. If it's uh, an oil refinery, it uses a lot of electricity. So this is where the, the big voltage would come in to be broken down to the various buildings. 
An interesting part that caught my eye is this blue section there. So what is that from? you got to have water. Um, you know, if occasionally putting water on things is, is a good thing to cool <laughs> things off or to... Uh, so I figured when I found the blue piping, it would be a great opportunity to put a little bit of it in just to give a little difference to all the chrome, gray, and uh, tan. Now, when you bring this to the show, is kind of each of these towers and areas a different section? How does this set up for you? Uh, the towers are a different section. The hard part is getting the piping together. Um, the piping connects, as you can see, across uh, bill lines. So there's a gray base plate holding up each building or a half of a building in the case of the uh, gray building on the far side. Um, the ta the um, piping is what has to be connected, and sometimes you're connecting piping in two or even three directions, and that's sometimes hard slotting things together. And what did you go for for the different minifigures on the layout here? Do they kind of represent different jobs, or how does that work? Uh, most of them are pipeline workers. You've got a few that are uh, contract workers on the back that don't have the, the right uniforms on, but uh, you know, it's, just, it's what I could find. And then I also noticed, are these the Star Wars planets, or what makes those yes, domes they, there? Yes, those are the Star Wars planets from the Christmas series. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's fantastic. It's so cool to see pieces like that used in a, a very different context, like a build like this. Sure. It, it, that's the beauty of Lego. You can use your imagination to think of how the pieces could be used in a different way, and then you give ideas to other people who find even more ways to use them. So I, I find a lot of coming to conventions is grabbing ideas from other people and saying, hey, I could solve that problem with this solution. And of course, we are at Brick Rodeo in Texas. So what is the public reaction like when they see something like this? This might be something that a lot of people, you know, the locals would be familiar with. Yeah, we get a lot of, I've had a lot of people mention that they work in the petrochemical industry or they have family that works in the petrochemical industry. And generally what they've said is that, no, it's not what they go to work every day. It's uh, a little bit more congested, <laughs> uh, but that it catches the essence. So uh, that that's... That's been fun to have people say, yeah, you've, you've, got, you've got the overall concept here. Well, perfect. Great work here, and it's cool to see something like this represented with so much detail. So thanks for bringing it out to the show. Well, thanks for letting me share this with the people that couldn't come to the show.